This is video podcast 18 from learningradiology.com. Five lung diseases of the newborn. I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. The five diseases we're going to talk about are hyaline membrane disease, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, transient tachypnea of the newborn, meconium aspiration syndrome, and neonatal pneumonia. Hyaline membrane disease, respiratory distress syndrome of the newborn. Hyaline membrane disease is believed to be due in part to a lack of sufficient surfactant production. This leads to an increased pressure which is needed to keep the alveoli open and decreased lung compliance. Those who are predisposed include premature infants under the age of 34 weeks, kitties born by cesarean section, and infants of diabetic mothers. There is a decreased lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio in the amniotic fluid in these children. Symptoms present in the first two hours of life. Symptoms that begin after eight hours are usually not due to hyaline membrane disease. There may be an increase in the severity of symptoms from 24 to 48 hours, and then there's gradual improvement over the ensuing 48 to 72 hours in most cases. The imaging findings typically include a diffuse ground glass or finely granular appearance to the lungs. Typically, it is bilateral and symmetrical in distribution. Air bronchograms are common, especially extending to the periphery of the lung. And in non-ventilated lungs, the rule is usually hypoaeration. In fact, hyperinflation for all practical purposes excludes hyaline membrane disease. This is an example of hyaline membrane disease. You can see there is a granular ground glass appearance to the lung. This is another example of hyaline membrane disease. This has a slightly coarser appearance, but there is still a granularity to it and an overall ground glass appearance. Treatment for hyaline membrane disease consists of positive end expiratory pressure or continuous positive airway pressure. Sometimes surfactant is administered via the endotracheal tube and oxygen and diuretics are sometimes used. In the past, almost all infants died of hyalomembrane disease by 72 hours. Complications were rare. With assisted ventilation, the recovery is in excess of 90%. All that follows represent complications of the treatment for hyaline membrane disease rather than manifestations of the disease itself. As the alveolus is distended by ventilatory methods, on occasion the alveolus can rupture. Air can then extend out to the pleural space to produce a pneumothorax. It can extend into the abdomen to produce a pneumoperitoneum. Air can extend into the lung to produce a pneumatocele. Air can extend along the bronchus and lymphatics to produce pulmonary interstitial emphysema. Air can extend out to the mediastinum to produce a pneumomediastinum. Or air can sometimes extend into the pericardium to produce a pneumopericardium. This is an example of a pseudocyst. There is hyalomembrane disease in both lungs and in the left lower lobe, there is a cystic lucency that represents the formation of a pseudocyst from hyalomembrane disease treatment. This is an example of pulmonary interstitial emphysema. You can see very small bubbles of air in the interstitium of the lung in this close-up. Video podcast 13, Three Ways to Slice PIE, covers pulmonary interstitial emphysema. This is an example of a pneumomediastinum. The right and left lobes of the thymus gland are lifted from the heart by air in the mediastinum. This is called the Spinnaker sail sign. This is an example of a tension pneumothorax in a child with hyaline membrane disease. This is an example of a pneumopericardium in hyaline membrane disease. The red arrows are pointing to a rim of lucency surrounding the heart that represents air in the pericardial space. In this child with severe hyaline membrane disease and almost complete opacification of both lungs, you can see air in the abdomen, which represents a pneumoperitoneum as a consequence of treatment. 
Chronic complications of hyaline membrane disease include lobar emphysema, localized interstitial emphysema, recurrent respiratory tract infections, retrolental fibroplasia, and subglottic stenosis from intubation. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia, chronic respiratory insufficiency of the premature. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia is a consequence of early acute lung disease. It can complicate hyaline membrane disease, but it can also be seen with meconium aspiration syndrome and neonatal pneumonia. Common to most of these is the administration of oxygen under positive pressure. There is some controversy as to the definition of bronchopulmonary dysplasia. One definition involves an oxygen requirement at 28 days of life to maintain an arterial oxygen tension greater than 50 millimeters of mercury, accompanied by abnormal chest radiographs. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia rarely occurs in infants under 1,250 grams or in infants born after 30 weeks of gestation. The imaging findings in bronchopulmonary dysplasia may be impossible to distinguish from the later stages of hyaline membrane disease. There are usually coarse, irregular, rope-like linear densities in both lungs that represent atelectasis or fibrosis. Intermixed with these coarse rope-like densities are areas of lucency, cyst-like foci that represent hyperexpanded areas of air trapping. Most of the time, there is hyperaeration of the lungs in bronchopulmonary dysplasia. This is an example of bronchopulmonary dysplasia. The loosened area represents an area of air trapping. The dense area represents an area of either fibrosis or atelectasis. Imaging findings in bronchopulmonary dysplasia can also include conglomerate disease. This can represent atelectasis, episodes of aspiration or pulmonary edema, or superimposed pneumonia. The changes of bronchopulmonary dysplasia will usually revert to normal on chest radiographs in most patients after the age of two years. Complications include sudden infant death, pulmonary arterial hypertension, an increased risk of pulmonary infection, and development of asthma. Transient tachypnea of the newborn, neonatal retained fluid syndrome. Transient tachypnea of the newborn usually occurs in full term or slightly preterm infants. Some are delivered by cesarean section, others through precipitous labor. There is usually a mild respiratory distress immediately after birth that improves within several hours. Imaging findings include hyperinflation of the lungs, fluid in the fissures, laminar effusions, indistinct or fuzzy vessels. So the findings are similar to congestive heart failure. This is an example of transient tachypnea of the newborn. You can see that there is thickening of the minor fissure, representing fluid in the minor fissure, and there is prominence of the interstitial markings. Frequently, there may also be laminar effusions present. This is the same infant shortly after the first image was taken in which all of the findings have disappeared. The treatment for transient tachypnea of the newborn includes oxygen, maintenance of the body temperature, and improvement usually occurs within the first 24 hours. Meconium aspiration syndrome. Meconium aspiration syndrome is the most common cause of neonatal respiratory distress in full-term or post-mature infants. Island membrane disease is the most common cause in premature infants. The pathogenesis involves meconium products being aspirated and producing bronchial obstruction and air trapping. They also produce a chemical pneumonitis. This usually occurs in post-mature infants. There is severe respiratory distress almost immediately upon birth and a respiratory distress that is more severe than that which is seen in transient tachypnea of the newborn. Imaging findings include diffuse ropey densities similar to bronchopulmonary dysplasia where there are patchy areas of atelectasis and emphysema from air trapping as well. There is usually hyperinflation of the lungs. Spontaneous pneumothorax and pneumomediastinum can occur in up to 25%, usually not requiring therapy. There may be small pleural effusions. There are usually no air bronchograms and clearing is usually quick if the aspirate contains mostly water. It can take days or weeks if it contains mostly meconium. 
This is an example of meconium aspiration syndrome. You can see there are thick, rope-like densities that extend throughout both lungs. The child is hyperinflated. The treatment for meconium aspiration syndrome is supportive. It includes antibiotics and oxygen. Sometimes extracorporeal membrane oxygenation is used. Complications include pulmonary hypertension, which can lead to a right-to-left shunt and cyanosis and anoxic brain damage. Neonatal pneumonia. Most times, neonatal pneumonia is due to an intrauterine infection or occurs during delivery. Most are bacterial in origin. Group A beta non-hemolytic strep had been the most common cause. Now the most common cause is more often E. coli. Classically, these are not febrile. They do, however, have marked respiratory distress and tachypnea. They may have a metabolic acidosis and septicemia with shock. Imaging findings include very higher streaky densities, very similar to transient tachypnea of the newborn. There can also be patchy airspace disease. Fuse, relatively homogeneous infiltrates can sometimes be seen, resembling the ground glass pattern of hyaline membrane disease, and there may occasionally be oral effusions. Lobar consolidation, a hallmark of pneumonia in an adult, is unusual in a newborn. Group B strep looks the most like hyaline membrane disease, but if you have a term infant with imaging findings that look like hyaline membrane disease, then the infant should be considered to have pneumonia until proven otherwise. Treatment includes the appropriate antibiotic, oxygen, and fluid support as needed. This is an example of a neonatal streptococcal pneumonia. The red arrow is pointing to an area of patchy airspace disease at the right lung base. Complications of streptococcal pneumonia include bronchiectasis, lung abscess, and glomerulonephritis. Streptococcal pneumonia can also be associated with a delayed onset of a diaphragmatic hernia in a newborn. To recap, if we look at the degree of aeration, the descriptive patterns, and the presence of pleural effusions in the five diseases which we've discussed. In hyaline membrane disease it is usually under aerated. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia is usually over aerated. Transient tachypnea is usually over aerated. Meconium aspiration over aerated. And neonatal pneumonia over aerated. If we look at the descriptive patterns, hyaline membrane disease is usually described as ground glass or finely granular. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia has cystic lucency separated by areas of fibrosis or atelectasis. Transient tachypnea has fluid in the fissures and indistinct vessels. Meconium aspiration has coarse ropey densities, and neonatal pneumonia has perihylar streaky densities. If we look at pleural effusions in these five diseases, hyaline membrane disease usually does not have a pleural effusion, bronchopulmonary dysplasia does not, transient tachypnea does, meconium aspiration may, and neonatal pneumonia may. So here is your mini quiz. This is a premature infant with respiratory distress. Which one of the five diseases that we discussed do you think this most likely is? You can pause your computer or MP3 player. If you said this is hyaline membrane disease, you were correct. There is almost complete opacification of both lungs. If you look closely in the left lower lobe, you can see there are numerous air bronchograms.